Hi everyone, it's Helen here and thank you for joining me today. So today we're going to be making a cute fold up mini album. It's going to be made from paper bags, so I have my lunch bags ready. I, you'll need four of those and we're going to be using freshly cut flowers from Papermania. There'll be links for everything that I've used down below and there'll also be uh, links on my website as well. The link for that will be down below and on there there'll be a cutting guide and this video will be embedded there too so you, everything's in the right place for you. So let's have a quick look at the paper collection. Right, so this is the A4 Ultimate die cut and paper pack. And to me, this just absolutely screams mini album kit because it has everything in there for perfectly making an, a mini album. It's got alphabets, it's got um, die cuts in there too, and tags. You can also make some boxes and things. I go into further detail on this pack in my haul video and I'll put the link for that down below as well. So you get loads of alphabets and loads of papers as well. So this is um, UK A4 standard size. So it's not um, eight and a half by 11. So here are the lovely papers and you also get a selection of vellums as well, which I will try to use in the album. So let's set that aside and then we can get on with making it. So we're gonna be um, making the cover first. I have two sheets here. This, these were originally two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock and I raided my stash for these. So I don't, I don't have any links for that. So just find whatever um, you think will go nicely. So I'm just gonna grab my scoreboard here. So um, I will give you some measurement measurements before we start. So this measures 12 by seven and a quarter. So 12 by seven and a quarter, that's going to be the height. And this one measures seven and a quarter by eight and three eighths. So let's grab the scoreboard out. I'm going to be using the We Are Memory Keepers fold up scoreboard, and it's also a paper trimmer as well. So we're going to just be using the scoring function for this. So let's turn that over, pop that back in. Right, now we're ready to start scoring. So I'm going to start with the longest section first, and it does come with an onboard bone folder as well. So I've been using this a few times now, and I'm really quite impressed with this scoreboard, but you do have to go backwards because it's a paper trimmer. These do go backwards, but I've, I found it really easy to adapt. So the first score line is going to be at four and five eighths. So there's the four, one, two, three, four, five. I don't even have to count it because let me get this up to the camera here. It actually says how many of the five eights. So if you actually do struggle with which notch does watch, uh, which notch does which, then um, yeah, that's really, really easy. And you can just see what you're doing and not score in the wrong place and ruin your piece of card, which yeah, I do that all of the time. So four and five eighths. And then the next one is going to be at five. The next one is nine and five eighths. There it is, that's so easy to find, no counting. And 10. Okay, this was one of my old measurements, but we need we do need a line there, so we need to take this up to three eighths, ten and three eighths. It will all be correct on the measuring guide. So this isn't in the wrong place because we are then going to add extra score lines on every eighth of an inch. On these gussets here so these are going this is actually going to be part of our spine because it's going to fold over so there we go so I've added every eighth of an inch in this section and this section so let's pop that aside grab our shorter piece and here we are going to score at four and five eighths again And at five and three eighths. And 
then again we are going to score it every eighth of an inch oops so there we go so now we can put this away and it folds up nice and neatly and that can go away now okay so grab these back again we're now going to do some folding grab a bone folder So I'm just scoring the main lines here, just to, just to do that first, and then the same on this one here, just do the main lines either side, just to get the shape going. Do the same on this one, Oops. folding the wrong way there. Okay, so we have everything folded now, so this is going to be the shape of our mini album. So now we need to curve our spines here. So this is why we have all these extra lines, just so that we can try and get these to curve around, which is actually quite difficult. So you just you have to really try and get it to do what you want it to do. So this, this more narrow one is easier to do just like that there we go so now we have that rounded so the next one I'm going to use something round you can use a pencil or a thick marker pen or something like that this is just going to help you get the curve in now you don't have to curve every single line perfectly it's just to get that shape just like that so do the other side Okay, so there we have that one, and let's do the last one. There we go. Right, so on this longer section, we're going to do some cutting now. It's just very, very simple. We are going to, on the shorter flap here, we're just going to notch in these two here. So when we glue this together, these top corners here aren't going to poke out the side. There's always a risk of this, these top ends here being visible when you stick things together. So you want to eliminate that so let's just slightly notch that out so I've just removed a very long triangle just from there do the same on the other side there we go that's it and then grab some glue I'm going to use collal go a bit stringy if you do um, let some of it come out so I want this flap here to go on the largest section here and on the top just like that so we're going to add our glue here I'm going to turn everything over because we're going to be doing this the other way around so all your spines are on mounting shapes Add the glue almost up to the score line. I'm not going to cover the score line. You can use double sided tape for this as well. Okay, so now I'm going to stick this on. I'm going to use you can use your scoreboard to line everything off up along the top, but I'm just going to use my cutting mats. I'm going to add this on so I have a full line here. You can also use a ruler as well. And I'm also not going to cover the score line here. So it's going to fold over nice and neatly without any stretching. So you can just about see the score line here. 
press that down. Okay, so here we have the basic shape of our album. It's up to you which way you want to have it round. You can have it this way or this way. I'm going to go for this way. So that's going to fold in like that, like that, and then around just like so. So now what we're going to do is grab our lunch bags. These are white lunch bags. You can also get them in a craft colour. I do have some. Oops, I knocked the camera there. I do have some, but they are a slightly different size. So you'd have to adapt your measurements for that. Okay, so back to the lunch bags. You're going to need four of these. So all we do is take the handles off just like that. I love using these lunch bags. These are really good for making mini albums as well. I've made quite a few with these already. So with this section in the middle, we're going to fold it exactly in half. Have a bone folder. Press that down. And there we have it. So we're going to have two sections here, just like that. So we'll start on the first section. So we're going to have the bag piece here, so we're going to glue that down. So open that up, add your glue. It's going to be hidden by the, the, um, the matting anyway, but it's good to, just to get that glued down. Do the same on the other one. Okay, so now what we're going to do is with the base of the bag at the bottom, we're going to glue them together just like so. So we have our pockets here and pockets there. So let's get the glue down on this. Add them together. Normally I would leave a gap here of no glue, but because we're only sticking two together, that rule doesn't really matter for this. But if you're doing a massive stack, only add the glue up to about here. So just add the glue in this section here and then leave this glue free. And then as your stack grows and you put things in your pockets and things, this, this section here will expand outwards just like that. But as we only have two bags here, that bit doesn't matter, so we can just carry on as normal. So let's quickly get these two done as well. Grab the glue, get everything stuck down. cover back in again. We are going to add our pages to this section here. <coughs> Excuse me. And this section here. And we're going to go quite up, quite close up to the score line but not covering it again because if we have tags and things sticking out of our pockets there's going to be a bit of space here for, for us to do that. So let's get these stuck down. I'm not going to do any um, nice paper mats on the sections behind the paper bags. You can do if you want. So let's go on the edge just here. So I want a little bit of the edge visible. And I also want an equal amount of space at the top and the bottom as well. Working out to be about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Right, so let's get the second one in. There's a bit of 
of a shadow here, so I'm going to move this round so I can see what I'm doing. Nothing like a shadow getting in the way of seeing a score line. <clears throat> We go using the glue will give us some wiggle room as well right so those are our pages put in so we have a page here a slot for two things so a pocket another pocket for two things and then another page here so we're going to put a pocket here and we have exactly the same on the other side so it's going to fold up just like that and then we're going to put some magnets here to close it with and I guess we could we could do something here as well we like to decorate every every side so the, uh, this will be where our magnets are so I want to keep that sort of plain right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut down some of the papers I will give you the measurements for the papers that I cut them down so and um, there'll be two different sizes one for the page size and one for these mats here and the front covers but as I said there's going to be a cutting guide and a scoring guide so right I'll be right back okay so I'm back now and uh, I've decorated so I've done half of the decorating so I've done all of the um the papers here so let's give you some measurements so these inner pages they measure four inches by uh, six and three quarters so I've done that size I think it's one two three four five so five page mats here and then another um five page mats here so these were actually part of <clears throat> like an a4 spread so i've kind of trimmed them down to keep them together so i've got those two there and then some lovely ones here right so for the pockets i've made these little photo mats here so these these white bits of card they measure six by four and then these mats they measure five and three quarters by three and three quarters so I'm planning on um, printing up my photos at three by four so it would come to about here and down to about there and I also can actually print them out smaller as well so um, I do like to like um, experiment with my photo sizes so I just use um, Microsoft Word for that so we have two in each one and there we go and I've used the plain the plain papers well they're not plain because they've got the dots but they're not patterned like this lot is so um, I've just used the plain styles there for the page mats on the cards let's turn this one over so it doesn't look the same okay so we close it up I've left this on blank because we're going to be um, using a magnet so I have this page mat here which is the same size for this size there and the back as well so I need to choose a paper for the back so this one measures seven inches by four and three eighths so it'll be the same one for this so I've chosen my papers and cut them out so that's going to go here and there's going to be some magnets under there and then this one here it's going to go here so there's going to be magnets over there as well I've got my magnets ready and then here we have oh, it closes up like that and then it closes up like that and I've put this on the wrong side there we go so I need to cut out one more for there and it's going to go like that and that and there we go and we're doing the magnets last after we've put everything in because I put the cardstock in here and there'll be photos and everything so it's bulking it out so if we put the magnets in before we do all that then um, this flap here is going to be in a different position because it's going to be fuller so it's going to be more towards that way if that makes sense so we're going to be doing the magnets after we've literally put everything in so um i'm not going to put the photos in but i'll still do the magnets so let's go on with the magnets and then we can do a little bit more decorating actually no we're not 
I want to put something here which is going to be quite bulky so magnets can wait. So I've gone through the die cutting um, pack that this came with and I found two of these pockets here so I'll show you what they look like. They're from one of these here. Here we go, it's from one of these styles. So I've just popped those two out so I was thinking I was going to do something like this and layer them up and then there was a circle here I'm going to put that just there. So I'm not going to use any sort of um, raised uh, foam pads or anything like that because I want to try and keep this as flat as possible. So any extra dimension I'm going to just add to the front cover. Let's get that down. Noisy birds out today. Let's pop this one on as well. I just love how everything just works together so well. I love coordinating kits. Okay, so I've definitely used my bone folder to get these creased down as well, and I used the collal glue to um, glue everything together. Right dry glue on my fingers there right so that's done so now I have this banner here so that's from this sheet here I think you get two sheets of these in the pack so I'm gonna dot these around I've taken off the it comes with a funny flap I'm not too sure what that's for it might be for just adding dimension I'm not sure so I'm going to glue this down normally I would use foam pads to lift that up because uh, it looks really nice when we do it like that but because we're keeping it flat we're just going to go for it with some glue and stick that down right so there's probably room here for another um, thing oh right, this might go nicely actually another banner here we could try and make one like that. I'm just going to keep this album really simple. I want places to put my photos so I'm just going to stick that down there. Oh no this one looks even better. There we go I'm like a magpie. Yes yes I like that. Last one, we can go for something nice and patterned here. May even do a whole banner, so it will stay away from the blue. Go for this one. We'll stick with the triangles, I think. That's a plain one there. That may not. Go right, um, that one, one more. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right, I'll get those stuck down and then I'll be right back. Okay, so they're all stuck down now, and I've just grabbed a um, an alcohol marker because normally I'd put a piece of string across there, but I'm keeping the bulk down. So this is a Spectrum Noir, and it's colour TN4, and I'm going to just use the smallest nib. I'm just going to join these together as if they are on a piece of rope or a string. Right, so I also did leave, grab a piece of paper here, I only glued it along the top edge here, so if I do add some photos then I can stop them underneath, let's pop 
that back. Right, let's move over to the other side. I may find something to put there as well. So let's just make sure we get all the best elements down first. And then we can do any gap fillers later. Right, moving on back to my die cuts. Do I go back for a banner? Um, oh, there might be a journaling spot here. So perhaps maybe one of these might go well. Maybe in this corner there. Might just tuck that there. Oh, this looks nice too. bottom. I've also got some more small ones here. See a lot of these are for card making so there's absolutely so much with this kit. There's enough to make the album and some cards as well. Oh I know what I'm going to do. Right we have some journaling points here as well. So not the to do. We can cover that. We can cover that with um, where did it go? One of the smaller ones. One of these, like that. There we are. Here's one of the smaller ones. I'm just playing, guys. I am literally just playing and seeing how things look. This is kind of how I roll when I decorate something, I audition things and see how things look and I move things around because you're pretty much stuck once you've glued something down ok they're all out we have some lovely circles here as well I like hello so we'll have the hello out as well this one's plain. This one's plain. Move those aside. Right, so my plan was, let's move these over. To perhaps have something like this or that. To make a little tuck point. Maybe even the hello would look nice. And then have something tucked in in there just like that that would look really good this is good for making a list of things that you've done or if you're making this album about a person you could also write the best 10 favorite things you like about that person or if this is for a baby book you could write 10 favorite foods or the first 10 favorite words this is going to tuck, I'm going to let this dry, but that's going to tuck in just like so. Let's move that aside. Maybe even something like that might fit at the top. Now that's a bit too much. I like to keep things balanced. I still got to try to see if it fits. Right, so the last one. This one's quite busy. So that doesn't go, that does go. I like that. That literally just fits. But these are quite large, so we could probably put these in with our photo mats just there. Let's pop another one in here. There we go. It's filling out nicely again. Uh, might make a good tuck point there. We also have some of these left over. So we'd have to stick with the plain ones because this is quite patterned. I don't want anything to blend in. So I like things with good um, contrast. So that might just blend in. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. I actually know it's coming together. No, that's the odd one out. Move that aside. Need one more. I did get two sheets of this actually. Let's find it. Let's 
So yeah, we've got some envelopes here as well. So I'm thinking maybe I should make um, an envelope album out of these envelopes. Let me know. Give me um, yeah, give me a thumbs up anyway. But let me know down in the comments below if you want to see an, a mini envelope album made out of that. Okay, so here they are. Right, what colour do we want? Green, yellow. There's only three colours to choose from, so we'll repeat a colour. We'll go for green. There we go. Move that round. Right, let's get that glued down. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so they're all stuck down now. Um, you may have noticed one was a wiggly one, but I changed that out for a straight one. And I've added this here, a little tuck point here. So we'll pop that there. That looks lovely there. We could turn it around. I think that looks good on the side. Right, so that's let's close that up, and we can do the magnets now and the um, the front cover. So I've added this page here as well, and they have some die cut strips. So you can add those to your pages. So I've taken the one that says love. So I've just added that down, cut that down to seven inches. So let's add the magnet. So let's close that now. Oh, I added this as well. Another tuck point. Right, so I have my papers ready. It's going to go just like that. So before we can actually get those sucked down, we need to do the magnets. So I got these from Amazon. These are eight millimeters by one millimeter thick. They are super strong. Read the warnings label. Okay, normally I would use a washer and one of these but because it's for our front cover I just want it to be as strong as possible so let's put these along I'm going to put two at the top so two at the top and two at the bottom I don't want to put them too close together either otherwise yeah they're gonna stick together and that won't be fun separating those right so I've got my Four magnets ready, so we're going to need some double sided tape, just going to grab mine, start off with two, so we want it more or less here, one here, and here. Go press your tape down. Lift that up. I've cut my nails. Right, so grab your magnet. It doesn't matter which way round at this point. And then stick that down. Okay, so we're just going to pop that on just like that, and then another one here. Then we're going to grab some more tape. There's loads of different ways to put these on. So I'm just going to more or less work out where that's going to go. Yep, that's going to touch. Yep, that's going to go like that. So press that down and lift it up. Next time I may put them slightly closer to here, but I don't want to go too near the edge of the papers. 
Okay, now we can get our papers put on. If they go, if the magnets go too close to the edge, you're going to get some gaping around the um, edge there, and I don't really like the way that looks. So let's get these stuck down. As you can see, it's trying to gate there, but just keep pressing that down. Make sure you've got enough glue for some good coverage. So I'm just going to add some glue all the way around this. So we're almost done here. Which way should I have that? This way around. Press that down. That's come out the edge there. There we go, and that snaps shut. Right, so now we need a little front cover thingy here. So when I did my shopping, when I bought this pack, I did buy some other things from the same range. So I'll just grab that. I also got the A4 decoupage pack from the same range, I absolutely love this as, as well. And you also get some more papers and some more um, elements that you can build up and layer. So I'm gonna go for this jar here. So let's grab that. I need to make sure I don't mix this pack up with, with my other pack. That wouldn't be fun if they got mixed up. So let's grab this. Get two sheets of each and put this over to the right so I'm going to pop all these out and I'm going to stick them together I've got some um, foam pads here so I'm going to it, they're all numbered as well so they're really easy and straightforward so you don't need to see me put this together so I'm going to get this together and then I'll be back for um, the final part of the video right so we're moving on to last little section so I take I've taken one of the journaling cards I've backed it onto some of the blue pattern paper this is going to be covered so it's not going to be a to-do list so I finished this it looks lovely so we're going to stick that on there and then we're going to add a bow so um, let's get this glued down and then we can make the bow I don't want to go too near the edges because some of them are going to come off the, off the side. Let's get that on. And there we go. Right, let's move that aside. So you get a die cut sheet of bows here. So you get two sheets of those. This is from the main big kit, the, the kit that I showed you first. So I've chosen my bow, it's going to be blue and it matches this one so it's slightly more blue than this one it's a very similar pattern and you're also going to need some brads so i have looked in my stash i found a pot these are ancient these are probably one of the first things i bought when i started scrapbooking probably back in 2004 2005 so these have been in my stash forever so maybe we'll go for the white one it's a little white flower So you get a hole in the front, so we're going to poke that out. And you get a hole here as well. And a hole here. So just to help our bow bend round, we take a bone folder and we're going to just do that just very gently until it starts to curl round. Okay, and then on the last one we're going to poke that out as well. So we're going to start with the front here, we're going to put our brad through there and then we're going to place these two ends over the brad as well and then 
just holding everything together we're then going to add it to the last section just like that and then we're going to have a lovely bow so let's move these prongs out a larger brad would probably look better but these are the only brads that I have let's push that down properly and then we can glue this on as well so I can always take something else now and glue it on top of the flower so that's going to go there and we're going to pop this just there and that'll be it so let's get everything glued down and then we'll have one last quick look through we don't glue on this side because that's going to be lifting up so we're going to just put it on half pop that on and the same with the bow as well we don't want any glue in this section here so we'll stick it we'll keep the glue to this area here stick that on just like so right let's move everything aside so this is our finished album I need to add maybe some more elements there but whoops that bow came off we're gonna need, need to leave that to dry a bit longer so it'll probably come off again while we sh while we have a look inside so that's going to open there goes the bow right so you can also add another piece of paper here just to cover this white section so it opens up like this and then again like this put my finger in the glue right so we have all these pages there some pockets I'll probably print off some small photographs and pop those in there I love interactive um, albums my children love interactive albums as well they love pockets and taking things out and having a look especially if it's photos of them as well so they're always taking off my albums off the shelves just to browse through them and they know they have to be careful as well so that comes out some more pockets and a tap point there right so thank you for joining me if you're still watching thank you for staying right to the end don't forget the cutting guide is on my website um, the URL is there and you can also click on the link which is the easiest thing to do. The link will take you straight to the blog post for this project and there will be a cutting guide and this video embedded on there as well so everything's in the same place and the supplies will be in the description box and on my website so they're in both places. So let's get the bow on there. If you like mini albums, please um, consider subscribing to my channel. I'm doing quite a few mini albums now, um, more than I used to, because just everyone loves them and I love making them. So um, there's going to be plenty more mini albums on the way. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.